Hello there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. Today is building day of the kit of the week and this week's kit is the Mars Messenger in 172nd scale from KP. Now if you are thinking of buying one of these and you would like to have a look at what's inside then there's a companion box opening video already on this channel. And of course do remember to come back tomorrow for the special combo version that will be the box opening today's content and some bonus historical material now if you enjoy our videos here please do remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already it doesn't cost you anything helps me enormously all you have to do is click on that small logo down there in the bottom right corner and of course if you want to support future productions you can do that through patreon and you can do that through buy me a coffee links to both of these are in the information box below so let's get on then and i'll show you how i made my miles messenger in 172nd scale from kp i'm starting with the cockpit these front seats sit on the floor here allowing enough room for the control columns to go in it's not immediately clear how the rear seats sit so i'll add them later on the two control columns go in next and they're simple enough and then when it's dry i'll paint the cockpit area with interior green i use idf green for this as it seems about the right tone i'll also paint the inside walls of the fuselage too the seats get a leather color first then when that's dry some wash to bring out the pleating I'm also going to put some instruments onto the front panel. Now, I've already painted both panels in a kind of woody colour. If you really want to, I suppose, you can have a go at making them wood grained. There are also decals to do for the seat harnesses. Full harnesses in the front and lap straps in the back. Then the front and back panels can go into one side of the fuselage followed by the cockpit floor as well and once that's set in place i can put the rear seats in so they sit in the right place and then the two halves of the fuselage can go together while that's setting being taped up i'll make the wings now these have these huge ejector pins inside them but just cut them out with nippers and sand flat then the two halves of each wing go together these are really chunky mouldings, it must be said. While the wings are drying, I'll start the tail assembly. There are fins, or vertical stabilizers, if you will, at the end of the tailplane, or horizontal stabilizer. The location is vaguely indicated how nice it would have been to have a small tab for alignment. There's also another fin in the middle. Again, no tab to give you a clue. With the fuselage all set and a little bit of filler added, I'm going to put on the front engine cover. Then the tail assembly can slot into place. The wings have these small locators raised on the side of the fuselage. They kind of give you the position where the wing belongs, but not the angle they should sit at. When both wings are on and partly set, I put the fuselage on a flat surface and supported the wings to the right dihedral. I found two flat lolly sticks under each wingtip seemed to do it. And while the wings are setting in place, I can take the time to paint the wheels, aluminium hubs and rubber tyre black. Once the wings are actually dry, I've done some little bits of filling and I can now add the canopy. I've made a mask for this for tape, but you can buy a proper masking set from Peewit. Leave it all overnight to set fully. Next day, and I'm spraying the underside with white. There's two reasons for this. One is that it makes the yellow that is going to be stand out better, but two, I'm doing invasion stripes on the underside. Don't forget the large flaps as well. I'm painting them off the kit, but check all the stripe alignments as you go. When it's dry, a bit of masking, and then on goes the yellow for the underside. I found that it certainly needs two coats. 
you can do the undercarriage legs while you're at it. And when your yellow's all properly dry, I can mask again, but this time just for the black of the invasion stripes. You might as well spray the propeller black too whilst you're at it. So far I think it looks pretty good, so quick coat of varnish to seal the bottom and then mask it off for the upper surface paint. I lay down a coat of dark earth first, let that dry and then add some homemade masks for the camouflage. When they're all done, I can add the dark green paint on top. Hey presto, a camouflaged messenger. There are a few bits still left on the sprue. The propeller gets white on the tips and the boss as they'll be painted yellow and red respectively. I'll also paint the damper legs in steel. Then the wheels can go onto the undercarriage legs. Now with the paint job dried and another coat of varnish, I'll start adding the decals. Now I've replaced the kit decals with some spares from my stash as I'm really not ha happy as I'm really not happy with the colour or the fragility of the ones supplied. The tail flashes are cut square in the kit decals, they're not shaped for the fins, so just fit it as best you can. I ended up painting a lot of the red in here, even my replacements broke. When the decals are dry, I'll fit the undercarriage legs. Now these are really not very secure, so try to get them roughly right and then adjust them as it starts to dry. The tail wheel is much more secure. Then I can add the flaps, as I say, pre-painted off the sprue, as you can see. There are rear supports for the gear legs and the exhaust that goes under the engine. And then this actuator for the flaps that can be added. Finally, the propeller goes on, the masks come off, and Monty's messenger is done. It's a cute looking thing, quirky with its big flaps and triple fins. It's a piece of history because of who flew in it, and it's an unusual addition to maybe a collection of planes sporting D-Day stripes. But the kit is using 60s design philosophies with 80s production quality, trying to make it in the 21st century marketplace. I had fun building it, but if KP really wants to break into the big time market, they need to get better process design, better decal supplier, so they can deliver what the excellent box art seems to promise. There we go then, the Miles Messenger. Now, if you've enjoyed the video, and I hope you have, please do remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. The link to do that is down there in the bottom right hand corner, it doesn't cost you anything, it helps me enormously. In any case, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again next time.